Alright guys, today I'm going to show you the basics of the Amnesia level editor and uh, I'm gonna make it as easy as I can for you to understand. Basically I'm going to go through all the features uh, as far as I know uh, and try to explain it uh, so that in case you are very new to this and you have no idea what you're doing so that you can get a good introduction to how to actually use this tool. Uh, once you have it downloaded and installed, it should look very similar to this, whether you're on Windows or Mac, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it should be the exact same on both, so don't worry. Um, although I have changed the cursor personally, uh, but it doesn't really make any difference at all. Uh, so let's just uh, start off with the more general things, and then I'll go more into uh, the different tools. But let's start off with the settings that you can define yourself, which are mostly head down on the bottom. Uh, and on the side, which you can define yourself to make it easier for you uh, to uh, use this tool. The first thing you might want to know are like these four windows. There's the front view, the right view, the top view, and the perspective view. Personally, I don't use any of these, I just use the perspective view, and um, therefore I, I don't really need to show these at all. Uh, I can just make this uh, maximize. If you uh, hover over it so there's a red square around it and you press either space or you just click on this view and large current viewport uh, it'll make this screen the max screen so usually uh, you can use these if you're going to align things very uh, carefully but personally I just use this one it's uh, easier to use in my opinion but whatever suits you the best uh, however I don't recommend using only these but uh, I recommend using this for placing things as it is a 3D world instead of 2D. So yeah, uh, just select whatever you want. Uh, if you want to keep show them all, you can maximize either one of them. Uh, but um, uh, you can show all four if you use these, but if you don't, I recommend sh maximizing this because it's a lot easier to work with a bigger screen. So once you have selected your screen of choice, now let me just go over the controls. Basically you need a mouse with a mouse wheel that you can click down to be able to use this level editor because it uses the uh, button 3 to uh, rotate the camera, no actually to move it. If you hold down Alt key or Option on Mac, Alt, you'll see there's a yellow line around here. Uh, while that is down you can uh, click down the uh, left mouse button and you can rotate like this uh, and you can click down the uh, mouse wheel button 3 and you can move around basically this ball is where the um, camera is locked on so uh, you can also use the mouse wheel to scroll and uh, zoom in and out uh, but you can also use uh, the um, button 2 the uh, right mouse click to uh, zoom in a bit more smoothly, maybe if you're gonna do some more precise work instead of jumping for each. Well, that might just be my my mouse wheel that snaps on like this. It's quite loud and obnoxious anyway. So yeah, that's uh, rotating and moving and stuff. So yeah, now let's go down to this bar at the bottom. This first button uh, basically cycles through the grid planes. You can only use this in the perspective view. And uh, if you look at the screen, now the uh, grid, which is right here, is um, horizontal. You can click this to flip it. Right now it's vertical, so you can move up and down if you'd like. And then there's the other one, which is the other one. It's also vertical. It also goes along the, um, the Z axis, I believe. I'm not, I'm not actually sure. I, I believe blue is actually an X, and the red is Z. But... Uh, I personally use this one all the time, uh, unless I'm placing like a huge plane, uh, as in uh, a plate plane, not an airplane. Uh, I might use these, but uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, I just use this and then I can uh, just uh, put it up and down if I'd like to move something up high. So basically, this is where items are placed. When you place something, it'll, it'll be placed at this line. Uh, at this level and uh, this button we'll go more into that a little later uh, but the height is basically the height of the grid so if you place something here and then you want to place something a bit further up you can click on this plus sign or write in the number 
and it will move the grid further up basically so right now the grid is taller than the actual uh, starting point it's uh, 1.25 uh, yeah so but usually I just keep it at zero uh, when I'm building things I might move it up if I'm gonna make a ceiling uh, normally a ceiling is placed at level 4 so this is the space you play in and then there's a ceiling there and the floor yeah I'm gonna put it back to zero you can move it up and down if you like and snap separation that is basically just the size of each grid square if you well you don't need to mess anything around with this but uh, if you uh, if you want to play something a bit in a different fashion in a different way you can make these squares larger I guess if you make it like these like one then uh, you can't really place things very accurately because you can only place them in these crosses uh, unless you have this but as I said I'll go more into that when you're actually placing entities but um, yeah so usually I just keep it at 25 because it's it's pretty good actually now let's move on to this place you already know what this button is basically just minimize and maximize or yeah uh, these two are light switches basically if you turn both of these off it's going to sh it's going to show how the level actually is lit up but you might want more light when you're working with it let me load up a map so that I can show you to load a map you just go to file open and you select any map just go through this browser and uh, once you load up a file uh, here you can see this uh, just a map I have uh, don't worry about it I'll explain more how to make a map like this but uh, let's just show an example of this light right now only the global ambient light is on if I turn it off this is how the level actually looks like in the game. If you turn it on, and this on, then it's completely bright. And you can turn it off, and these are uh, global point light, and this is global ambient light. I usually keep this on, it looks pretty nice when you're working. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but you might want to turn it off if you want to see if it's really, really dark in a place. Uh, also, this button, which is the F right here, focus on selection. You just click on any entity like uh, let's click on this bed don't worry about this yet if you click on the focus button it will zoom in or well not zoom in but it will positionate the bed in the middle of your camera view so you can just zoom in if you like so basically it just positions this, positions this thing uh, in the middle right like that and then uh, in, in case you're having trouble finding it or whatever now this thing, I haven't really been messing around with it very much, I'm not sure exactly how to explain it in a good way. But basically it looks like it uh, can hide out certain entities uh, that uh, are uh, beyond this big white out frame thingy. And you can move it back and forth and it will only show the ones that are in touch with it. That's what it looks like. Um, but. Uh, again, I haven't really been messing around with this. You don't really need to use it. You you can make really cool maps without this because I have made a few and I have never used this thing. I just tested it out right now, so yeah. But personally, I don't really use it. You can, I mean, if you find out how to use it effectively, I don't really get the system yet, though. But yeah, whatever. If you find out, then great. Now that we are done with this part down here, we can move on to the side, which is not that much to explain, but yeah. Let's zoom in on something. Uh, this is the select type. Basically, if it's checked on all, you can select anything. Uh, whether it's an entity, like a bed, a plane, like the floor, or a static object, like a wall. You can, you can click on anything, and if you want to click on, say, let's try to click on the wall through the closet, you can click on it twice. And we'll click on the um, select the next thing behind it. Um, and uh, but also, if you don't, if you want to exclude certain things, you want to be able to select, or uh, want to include only a few. Uh, you can click on multi-select instead of all. And here you get the list of uh, things that you can select. Right now, you can't click on anything because nothing is selected. So nothing will be selected, no matter what you do. You gotta click these things down, and uh, these are the different categories for objects that you can click on. 
basically these are uh, compound and uh, lights and uh, such billboards basically uh, they are the categories on this side that you uh, have different objects that you can place in your level and uh, let's see entity is right here uh, basically a bed is an entity and a closet is an entity the wall is not an entity I can click the bed now I cannot click the wall because then I gotta click on the uh, static objects where is that right next to there static object and now I can click on the wall and the ceiling because those are static these are areas though you cannot click on these because I have not selected areas and if you select areas you can uh, click on them personally you can use these if you have a lot of entities on the side and on the level and whatever but I just use all uh, if I want to select something I just click on it several times and it selects the thing behind it you cannot select uh, things through the invisible part this wall is only one side you cannot click it through the wall you click on the thing that you're pointing at so yeah that's the multi selection and um, these three things here are uh, pretty self-explanatory uh, let's say we have this object right here uh, if you select these arrows you can uh, move it if you can move it to the side move it that way you can move it up and down or if you select multiple in this whole thing if you manage to get your cursor to select all of them you can select it up take it up and down I mean it could be very hard to control that way though but you can select uh, several directions at once like this or like this and uh, the circle can make you rotate the, the object you're selected rotate it in any way you wanna rotate it all the way around even though that's no real purpose but whatever yeah, so if you want to rotate and make some cool structures like this, maybe. Yeah, so you can rotate it that way. And the last one is the scale one. Basically, it has the. Uh, if you're familiar with 3D modeling or uh, stuff like that, you will recognize the circle, balls, and whatnot. Whatever. Um, so you can scale it like this and can make it really long and uh, hard. And Or if you just select this box in the middle, you can scale the whole thing proportionally. Uh, or you can just uh, scale it in one direction only, but this looks really, really weird, and I really don't recommend scaling it much in one direction to make it unproportional. Uh, you can do it a little bit, it won't be that noticeable, but if you stretch it that much, it's it's gonna look weird. So, uh, yeah. But that's pretty much it. And the shortcuts for these are the uh, Q, W, and E. So once you get familiar with this, you can just press Q, W, E, and you can select through these things, so it's easy to move it around and rotate and all that stuff. So yeah. Now I'm almost running out of time, so I'm just going to show you a few more smaller things before I start off with part two, which is going to explain these things and uh, uh, these tabs right here. Uh, first of all, uh, the grid. If you don't want to show the grid, you can press G and it will uh, hide the grid. You can also go on, uh, I believe it was View, Show Grid. You can also go Show Axis. Uh, which is, I believe, A was it? No, what was it again? Oh, it doesn't have a shortcut. Uh, you can hide the uh, lines going there. But if you hide everything like this, it's very hard to see um, all these things. So I, personally, I use them. But uh, if you want to hide them for some reason, then feel free to do so. We also have um, render mode, which is by default shaded. That means you can see all the items. But if you select wireframe, you won't be only be able to see the frames of the objects, uh, so it, it looks very technical and it can look very weird. But um, it, it's like the uh, top right and uh, front view; they are always like that, uh, I believe. You can't really change that to faded. Only the perspective view you can change to faded, shaded. Sorry. So yeah. Also, we have the presets, which are basically just quick uh, back to these things but whatever but yeah so that's uh, basically uh, it about this uh, the only thing that's left I guess would be uh, these two tabs up here uh, basically just uh, undo and redo and all those stuff and you can you can find objects if you're looking for something you can search it up right here and uh, uh, general settings right here if you want a skybox you can use that outside the level and some uh, general uh, uh, global fog for the level well it would, would be local but 
and the calls which is uh, like uh, blood or other effects that are added to certain entities but you don't really need to worry about that I mean uh, level is as it is and uh, if you make a level that just looks nice um, you can play it it doesn't really have much happening in it though if you lock this door uh, you wouldn't be able to open it without scripting but I'll make a scripting tutorial later uh, for now uh, I'll have a part two of these basics uh, sooner or later uh, which will cover these tabs right here on how to actually make a level you just need to know the basics of these things, how the level editor works. So once you know that, um, yeah, let's uh, start off with the next video. See you there. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope you found it helpful.